Hey, what's up everyone? Morty Croson here, and today we're going to be talking about the relationship between leg length and speed, and I'm going to start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting topic just because people have the opinion that having long legs is something that is indicative of people that are faster, right? Like you have to have a ratio of, you know, longer legs in comparison to your torso, in comparison to your height, and therefore you have more ability to run faster. And so what I wanted to do is be able to look more into that to be able to see if that is true. And really we're gonna be specifically targeting like the 100 meter race to be able to clearly identify a role just so then we could say in a group of athletes, we wanna be able to get this result because if we go into the 400 or the 100 or the 1500 and the 60 and, and put all those different things together, then just makes it so the data is gonna be all over the place. So we wanna be as specific as we can. We're gonna look at the 100 meter and if leg length is indicative to performance. And the short answer when it comes to the 100 meter would be no, okay? And the reason why is because the 100 meter is a very interesting race where it is just long enough where people that have longer legs can have an advantage and just short enough where people with shorter legs can be an advantage. So, you know, people that run more of like the 200 or the 400, the longer legs are more of an advantage where somebody who's running like a 60 meter or a 40 yard dash, the shorter legs would actually end up being more of a benefit when it comes to running. And, and the reason behind that is because when you have longer legs, what it looks like in the data is that uh, longer leg athletes typically have faster top speeds, right? They're able to get to higher top speeds. And then when we look at shorter athletes, they typically get to their top speed faster. So they have great ability to accelerate. And so obviously the shorter races, when you could have great acceleration, then you're gonna be able to get to, from point A to point B faster, okay? Where when you start to lengthen the race, what's gonna end up being more important is what is the top speed, right? How fast can you actually go? And again, that 100 is just in between where there doesn't seem to be any data that says that you have more of an advantage if you are taller or less of an advantage if you are shorter. Okay, and so what we wanna be able to do is then look to see what does make a difference, okay? And so what seems to make a big difference here is strong lower bodies, right? The ability to have uh, large anaerobic chemical stores. I'm gonna just read off of this here to make it a little bit easier. High amounts of fast twitch muscle fiber, stiff tendons and fascia, and, and a great ability to utilize their nervous system. So when looking at that, the big thing that stood out to me, because a lot of those are going to end up being just kind of genetic, it seems like fast switch muscles is something that ends up being really important, right? We have to have, be really strong in really the whole body, right? The core, the upper body, that matters too, but definitely strong within the lower body. Makes sense if we're running, okay? And a big part of having strength in that lower body is going to be the amount of fast twitch muscles that you have, because that ends up being a big part of being able to generate power. And the general consensus is that you wanna have at least 70% of fast twitch muscle fibers in that lower body, uh, and even up to potentially 80% of your muscles that are in your body made up of fast twitch muscles in order to be a great sprinter. So then the question ends up being, what is the typical, right? What's the average? The average is about 50% of your body is fast twitch, 50% of it is slow twitch. And so can we build fast twitch? Can we make it so we can get into 70? And it seems like you can. What the evidence has shown that you can. And I mean, there's a lot of things that, there's, there's different opinions of how much and if it is truly changing the chemical foundation of the muscle, right? If it, if it is actually going from a slow twitch to a, to a fast twitch, or is it just kind of changing some of the components of it to make it so it's more fast twitch than slow twitch, but it's still a slow twitch. But uh, anyway, the, the overall consensus, consensus is that it, it can change. It takes about five to six months, and it's estimated to be up to 10% of your body can, can possibly change, your muscle fibers can change, right? So if you're 50-50, you can be estimated to go up to 
and it's going to take about five to six months to be able to start making those changes or being able to see changes. Now, there's not a ton of data to support that 10% is as much as you can do. So they're, they're, it doesn't really, they don't know exactly how much you can adjust your muscle fibers. Because again, there, there's still a debate on if the muscle fiber is even changing in the first place. And so that ends up being a, a big question. And the more that I looked into this, right, the more I was going in and reading into to all the things that, that go into being a great sprinter and having top speed and all that type of stuff, the more that I, I think a few things end up mattering the most, right? And because especially when you go and listen to the opinions of the sprinters. So there's a lot of people that have opinions that are researchers, people that are in labs that are whatever, are, are, haven't been able to achieve top level sprinting. And then there also seems to be a different opinion in, in some ways of people that are actually great sprinters. And what really seems like uh, the big thing to me and, and what the, the sprinters talk about is just having a huge work ethic and a, a very hard, you know, difficult, challenging, right? However you want to kind of relate to that in terms of their training regimen. So I looked it up on average, these Olympic athletes are training or Olympic sprinters are training around 20 hours per week, right? So if you train out for an hour a day for seven days, that's seven hours. If you train for two hours every single day during a week, that's still 14 hours. So they're basically training about three hours per day on sprinting or you know different variations that would probably include types of recovery types of stretching that also ends up being a big part of it how well can you maintain health and also have a high training output so it comes down to passion it comes down to discipline it comes down to competitiveness how bad do you want to be a great sprinter so there are some parts of this that will put yourself behind the eight ball in ways. You might only have 50, 50 in terms of your fast switch to, to slow twitch muscle. You would have to build your fast switch muscle. And doing that would include fast movements, explosive movements, box jumps, depth jumps, different types of really low amount of reps with a high amount of explosion within there, a lot of recovery time within your workout. So all those things make a big difference when it comes to building the fast switch muscles. And again, you have to just love what you're doing. You have to really want to be a great sprinter. It's, I don't think it's as much, again, just as just by watching and seeing what the uh, top sprinters talked about, right? It, it is some degree of gift, right? But there's a lot of guys that have been, been able to achieve huge feats when it comes to sprinting that were really not even working out at a time right or had a really bad start were running 11 seconds 12 seconds at the beginning and had to work themselves down into the 10 seconds or even below 10 seconds and so there doesn't seem to be a correlation between your anthropometrics right the, the length of your muscles or the size of your muscles or the size of the tendons, right? There's certain benefits that you could have by having some of these things. You could be a little bit more naturally fast, have some natural, natural gifts here. But it seems to me, again, when watching and listening to what the top guys are talking about, that they had to develop the ability to get to these top speeds with the hard work and with the consistency and by eating well and maintaining a great training regimen and having a high amount of self-motivation and self-discipline to be able to show up and make their dreams a reality. And so even if you have some of these gifts, even if you have longer legs or if you have a large amount of fast switch muscle fiber or you have stiff tendons right a great nervous system you can still get outworked hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard so at the end of the day you could have some talent you could have some gifts i think all of us have certain gifts all of us have certain abilities but we have to be able to utilize the gifts that we were had that we have and really be able to build off of those and build off of our weaknesses and make improvements and, and love what we're doing in order to reach the top. That seems to be what the consensus is. But in order to have great sustained performance, 
you have to be able to put in the work, put in the training, and have the discipline to be able to get there. As always, guys, if you like the information, click that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can leave those down below. Really excited to be able to make this video. I hope it helps. I hope it gets somebody a little more, more motivated. Right? I hope it gets somebody that maybe is doubting their some, themselves or doubting their abilities and putting in perspective that they can actually make it happen. I would say that this applies to more than just sprinting too. You know, if you can be any body size and be a, a great sprinter, then you could be any body size and be just about anything, right? Just because uh, when it comes to sprinting, right, it seems like those, that is something that a lot of people just talk about is just genetic. And what it seems like when, when again, even looking at a lot of the data, it doesn't seem like there's very much genetics behind it. It seems like it's very much based off of what it is that you do every day. What is your re regimen? What are your habits? So take that in consideration. Again, like, subscribe. That helps out a ton. And I'll talk to you soon.